Hello C++ folks. Uh, we're going to talk about retrieve form start which includes the parse function which is complicated enough that it, re it uh, deserves a little explanation. Uh, we are going to need a struct called fields, we'll call it fields, with two strings, one for name, one for value. Those will help us uh, dissect the query string, which we're going to talk about in a minute. But, um, okay, we have a counter, which is assigned at three, since we only have three fields in the HTML form, which you are required to use for this exercise. Uh, two prototype, one for parse, the one that you're going to complete. We're going to uh, pass a string, which is going to be QS and is going to be, of course, ultimately passing an array of fields to contain all the three fields from the form. Uh, this one is going to be completely on your own, but the prototype is there already. Uh, we are uh, creating the array already, which you don't use, which this program does not make use of, uh, name value pairs, and it's going to be three f elements long, and here's a string which we're going to get from the URL with this command from Linux, get environment, and uh, it's a variable called query string on the operating system. We're going to uh, populate QS with that. Uh, QS will look uh, something like this. You see here three fields separated with an ampersand. And each field is separated by an equal sign uh, with the name on the left of the field and the value of the field on the right. So the form is going to pass three fields. This one happens to be called first. Uh, then we have the value Fred, uh, whoever you filled that form, entered Fred. So now Fred is associated with the name of the field first. The second field called last has a value of flint and the third field has a name of color and a value of red. Uh, once you run this uh, program of course uh, the get environment you want to check make sure that it has been uh, assigned correctly so debug with QS and it should give you whatever you typed in the form. Uh, parse. This will separate the name value pairs uh, found after the question mark in the URL and populate the name value pairs array of structures. That's what it will ultimately do. Here in the header we are retrieving QS and you are retrieving the array which we don't make use of right now. We have we need two strings, one called name, one called value. Uh, the start position is going to be initialized to zero and we'll need an extra position variable to keep track of where we are in that QS string as we go through this loop. The loop is going to go of course from zero to count which is globally uh, initialized already as you recall right here uh, before, before main. So it is in scope And we increase it one by one. It's going to go, this loop will go three times since we have three fields. Okay, let's begin with position. It's going to be assigned the procedure find, which requires two arguments. The first argument is what are we looking for? And the second argument is where shall we start in the string? So uh, the first time around, position, start position will be zero and so it's going to start in front of the F for first it's going to count how many letters and it's going to stop at the equal sign and return that position now that we have the position for the equal sign we can use it to find the, the, the field name we're using a substring which is explained in this article I gave you in the assignment. Hopefully you will study that thoroughly. 
substring requires in this case two arguments ms start position which at first is going to be zero and then is going to get every, everything between zero and the second argument which is going to be constructed with position which should be like six or seven minus the start position which is zero so it's going to go basically from zero to seven and return everything in between these two points that will now give you the name at the first time first in name now this is just a debug statement all right it's just showing you that name is indeed uh, what we expect for the first field which should be first and that's it that's your first line here and now we are going to find the second start position which is going to be the present position where it stopped at the equal sign and we just add a 1 to that so we can go beyond the equal sign and start looking at the value after the equal sign so now we have a new value for uh, the start position and we're going to be using that of course in our second position and this time we're going to look for the end percent because that will be the end of the field as you probably know uh, after the equal sign the value is sandwiched between the equal sign and the end percent so that's what we're looking for next we supply what we're looking for and we supply the start position and uh, just in case uh, this position finds itself outside of the range of the array we use this command right here don't worry about what it looks like but just know that if position is giving an inappropriate number then position will be assumed to be the length of the string so we know just give us the value up to the end of the string and not any further than that okay so this works to stop the loop basically sorry it does not stop the loop it simply gives us the proper value on the last try okay so now value is uh, we're going to use the substring from the start position and again we take the position that it has found minus the start position and this will sandwich the value and send it back to our variable which we just uh, spit back out on the screen to make sure that is correct and then start position is now again position plus one which is nothing but I guess the first time through the loop we ended up right here at the end percent now we are ready to loop number the second iteration of the loop which is going to look for uh, the second field and the second field is going to be one position beyond the end percent which is exactly what we're doing here so that's it this loop will go three times and it should give you these values name and a value and now that you have these values in hand, I trust that you will be able to simply put these values inside of the this array f name value pairs of of uh, strict fields. Uh, you're going to put the name, of course, in the in the element called name, and you're going to put the value inside of the value field of this array. Thank you very much. I hope that explains it a little bit. Good luck.